everybody welcome back i hope you had a fantastic thanksgiving i know i ate too much did you i had so much fun it's been quickly becoming one of my favorite holidays i get to spend all day just working with the turkey on the traeger i got to do a honey glazed ham double smoked oh my goodness so so good it uh, was different for me. I'm sure it was different for you. I didn't get to spend a lot of time with extended family, but we Zoomed and it was awkward, but it was, it was fun. It was good to be able to, to catch up with most of my family. So tonight we continue on. This is the fourth and final of our series on Family Matters. Family Matters is important because we've talked about it in two ways. One, your family is important. I know you didn't choose your family, but family is important. And it also matters in that sometimes there's drama. Family matters. And that drama sometimes is confusing and it's hard and it's just important for us to figure out what to do when family isn't perfect. Tonight we're going to continue that and finish off the series. Here we go. I know not everybody's family is the same. Some families are really difficult. Others are okay. My family growing up, I, I loved my family. I was the youngest. I was not aware of uh, any, any drama that was going on, but as a young person, I could complain about what was going on in my own mind, maybe to my friends, but the truth is I had a great family. I was very, very blessed to have that. As I started to get older, I think this is what people do is they start to look out for other relationships outside of their family. And so I developed a network of friends. I had about four really, really close friends. Some people in my life have said, you've been friend rich. I've been fortunate to have a lot of good friends throughout my lifetime. I don't know if that's your story, but that's been my story. In about junior high and into high school, through high school, there was about four of us. We ran around. We did everything together. We started to go to church together and youth group, and that became another extended family for me. My group of four friends, we would meet together. We would play together. We would also go to small group and church together, and that became an awesome family extension. Tonight, as we carry on the conversation about family matters. We've talked about how important your family is and how sometimes that's difficult, but God can use that to grow you. Tonight, we start to see that God can provide more family for you. Maybe your physical family, maybe your next family, as you didn't choose this family, but you will choose your next family. But also, God provides people in your life that they become like family to you, maybe even closer than family in some ways. As we move on, we want to look at what we think and what we observe, but more importantly, what God has to say about these family matters. No matter what your family experience is, I don't know if it's been difficult or if it's been awesome, no matter what, every family struggles. I feel like I had a great opportunity when I was growing up. My mom and dad loved me and uh, provided what I needed for the most part. And so even though I would say that was great, you know, of course, we're all sinners. And so not everything's perfect. I don't know what your situation is, but it's helpful for us to just start there and know that there is no such thing as a perfect family. It can sometimes be frustrating when we see these movies and these TV shows, 
and we feel like, man, that family's got it together. Maybe you know a family and you feel like that family's so perfect. The truth is, there is no perfect family. In fact, one of the things that I like about the Bible is it helps me to feel better because I see other broken people. I see other broken families. In fact, some of these stories are really, really crazy. We get to see people who lived before us, who their family situation was difficult, and we get to learn from their thoughts and their actions, their attitudes, how they were able to navigate that and move forward. Let's check this out. There are so many stories that we could look at, but one of my favorite stories is Jonathan and David. Now, of course, Jonathan was the son of a king. He had what seemed like a pretty sweet family. But David was anointed by one of God's prophets, Samuel, to be the next king. Saul didn't like this. And you would imagine his son, who would be heir to the throne, would not like this either. But that's not what we see. God provided something special in David and Jonathan. Let's take a look at it together. In 1 Samuel 18, verse 1 through 3, after David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond of love between them, and they became the best of friends. From that day on, Saul kept David with him and would not let him return home. Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. I don't know if you've had these kind of friendships. I hope that you do. But sometimes God just provides a friend in your life that you can't really understand the bond but it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. I love that we get to see this picture of Jonathan and David. Kind of an unlikely scenario, an unlikely friendship, but God provides it. I don't really know, this is a little bit of speculation, but I think that neither one of these guys was really getting everything that they needed from their families. Jonathan had an awkward relationship with his dad. Saul was going through some difficult things as we read through the Bible. He just had a hard time being king, and he obviously was trying to defend it and keep it at all costs. David was the youngest of his family, and I don't know if you're the youngest, but sometimes it can feel like everybody else gets to do everything, and David was really overlooked in his family. I'm not sure, but as we look through, we can speculate that these guys didn't have everything perfect going on, but for whatever reason, they became, they became thick as thieves. We see another interesting thing here over in chapter 19. We fast forward in time. Saul becomes angry. He thinks that David is going to take his throne, and so he tries to protect this. Saul now urged his servants and his son Jonathan to assassinate David. But Jonathan, became, because of his close friendship with David, told him what his father was planning. Tomorrow morning, he warned, you must find a hiding place out in the fields. They go on and they work out this plan to figure out if indeed he's trying to be killed. And then if he is, they're going to they're gonna part ways. And there's this beautiful moment where they embrace each other and David separates. That kind of friendship is amazing to me. I mean, he risked his life. Jonathan was going to be king. And if he just looked the other way or, or purposely killed David, he could have been king over the entire land. Everything would have been his eventually, most likely. But because of this strong, strong brotherhood bond that God had provided for them, that didn't happen. Now, don't get me wrong. Your family is important. If you can, pray for your family members. Talk to them. Invite spiritual conversations. Don't give up on that. But your parents didn't really choose you. They may have chosen to have you, and you didn't choose your parents. But I think God did. God put you in your family for a reason. And you may not see it, but it's an important, influential thing in your life. You may spend the rest of your life in counseling because of it, but it is there to help you, to mold you, to grow you, to strengthen you. So don't, don't mishear me. Don't misunderstand. Your family is important. But tonight, as we can continue this conversation, I want you to know that God provides people in your life to influence you and to grow you and strengthen you. As we look at these kinds of friendships, 
go into it understanding that who you choose as your friends is super, super important. Now, God may just provide a really great friendship for you, but you may also need to think and pray and make decisions to find these people that can help reinforce your values and your beliefs, that can help you stay strong and hold to the path that you want to follow. If you are a follower of Jesus, you need this kind of family in your life. Let's look somewhere else real quick. This is in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, let's start in verse 23. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his returning is drawing near. First of all, let's not gloss over the first part of this verse in 23. Let us hold tightly without wavering to God's promise. He can be trusted. Sort of an underlying theme of this whole series and hopefully every series that we talk about is God. God is good. He is good, right, and perfect. And who he is motivates who we want to be by following his son, Jesus. And so even though there are some actions that we can take, it is God who's doing this work in our lives. And we need to trust that he can be depended upon. We can trust him. Without wavering, we can affirm to these truths. Now, verse 24, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. As you look at the people around you, maybe your family, maybe your friends, maybe people who are just outside your circle a little bit and you want to help draw them in. They need a family, maybe somebody like you. Let's motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Now check this out. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another especially now that the day is drawing near. Now, this verse is used in a couple of different ways. In our context tonight, it's saying, hey, don't give up meeting with your friends. Your friends are important. It has a higher meaning. It's usually used in reference to churches not giving up meeting together. Now, this is weird times with COVID, and we're sort of asked not to meet together. But we have the ability to meet together, whether it's like this, or you can show up Sunday morning or Sunday night. We can get together as Jesus followers, and we, should, we can worship together. We can pray together. We can talk about God, learning from his word. We can encourage one another. And so we should not give that up. That is really, really important. Now, I'm not saying throw caution to the wind and be reckless. But what I am saying is if you can come and join us sometimes, then you should do that. For now, we're taking a break. But you can still encourage one another. You can still show up Sunday morning. You can still text somebody. You can call somebody. You can Zoom somebody. There are so many ways that you can get together with people and encourage them towards loving acts and deeds. Now, not to just be in the action mode, but as a response. Remember, this verse started with, we can trust in God and his promises. We're really looking at Jesus' followers here. As a follower of Jesus, whether it's in your family or your close friends, your job is to encourage them to follow in Jesus' footsteps, to love God and love people. Now, sometimes I think that we get stuck there and we just become a bit self-centered as Christians. We think about, hey, I've got my circle of friends. I've got my pack. Good for me. Too bad for you. And we forget that God started this process by inviting us into his family. We weren't perfect. We were broken. Completely despicable. But God chose to love us and provide a way for us to be adopted into his family. As followers of Jesus, we need to do the same thing. We can't just look at our family. We can't just look at our close circle of friends. 
We need to look at the people outside of our family and invite them in. They need to know what it means to be loved. Friends, tonight, I hope that you get this idea that family matters. Your physical family is so important. Pray for your parents. Pray for your siblings. Encourage them to love God. Pray for your friends. Think strategically about who you should spend time with. Maybe some friendships need to move forward because they're good for you. Maybe some friendships need to move back because they're not as good for you. But one more thing, friends. There are some people out, outside of your circle that they really need for you to share some love with them. Just text them. Say, hey, I was thinking about you. Hope you had a good holiday. Maybe you extend the conversation a bit more and say, hey, I just wanted you to know that I was praying for you today. I know you've been struggling with this. Maybe it's grades. Maybe it's family. You know, everybody feels like the things that they're going through is super important. It's because they're so close to the problem. And maybe you don't feel that same pain that they do, but to them, it feels like a big deal. Taking a moment to say, hey, I care about you. I love you. I know that this is stressing you out. I'm here for you. If you want to talk, let's do it. However you decide to invite some friends forward into your circle, I pray that you would have a response. I pray that you would get some sort of text or a smile or emoji, something that, that shows that that person heard that you care for them. I hope that it goes more than that surface level. Maybe it'll take several times for somebody to respond, but I, I pray that you will see fruit from this, that you will see evidence that somebody took that little thing and it meant a lot to them and they take a step closer to your family. I pray that they take a step closer to God's family. My prayer is that you get the opportunity to share what you believe about Jesus with these people so that they too can become part of God's wonderful family. And with that, friends, I say good night. Let's pray. God, we pray to you. I'm so grateful that we can. We can talk to you, our heavenly Father. God, I thank you for inviting us into your family and for showing us what a real, godly, healthy family looks like. I thank you for the healthy families that we have and for those who are not perfectly healthy. God, I thank you for helping us to see through those hard times, for challenging us and growing us, your commitment to make us strong. God, I thank you that you can be trusted and that no matter what these family circumstances are or friend circumstances are, there is a way for us to see you and draw closer to you. God, I pray that we would grow closer to your son, Jesus. Help us to follow in his footsteps. God, help us to move past just taking care of our own needs, taking care of our own interests. But God, I pray that you would help us to look around us and look to the interests of others both those who are already in your family and those who are not yet in your family. God, help us to follow Jesus and to be about inviting other people into your family. God, we know that you do that work, but you invite us to participate. Help us to obey. Help us to follow. God, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.